So I've been doing a ton of research recently on the best budget audio interface for my MacBook Pro M1. I've landed on two different options, the Audient Evo 4 and the Universal Audio Volt 176. But one of them stole my heart, and in this video, I'm going to explain why. So what you're hearing right now is actually the Evo 4 with my Shure SM58 microphone plugged into it via XLR. The Evo 4, first of all, has a beautiful design. It is all plastic, which is kind of my big con with it. Like it feels a little bit flimsy, but the design itself I think is minimal. It's beautiful. It gets the job done and the price is only $139. The UA Volt comes in at $195 right now on Amazon. I'll leave links to buy these in the description below. So right off the bat, if budget is a concern, the Evo 4 is an amazing value for what you get, especially because listen to how clean this audio sounds. So I have phantom power enabled on the Evo 4, which is delivering a really clean signal from the SM58 into the Evo 4, and I have the input gain turned up all the way. I mean, it is 100%. Listen to how quiet the noise floor is. Like it's really impressively quiet, right? And I also like about both of these interfaces, but especially the Evo 4, it's just really small and compact. It's freaking adorable. I just wanna put it into like a hot dog bun, put some peppers and stuff on top, a little ketchup, a little mustard, put it on a grill, fry it up. But the point being, the audio sounds so good on the Evo 4. The Evo 4 also has two inputs and two outputs, as well as a headphone jack, and it also has a JFET instrument input on the front. But this really speaks for itself. I mean, it is so clean. I love the minimal design. It's a cute little device, but it is a little bit flimsy. That's my biggest concern with it is if I throw it into like a gear bag or if I played gigs with it and somebody just like steps on it, I have a feeling this thing would just completely crumble. So build quality, definitely an issue, but you're only paying $140 for it. And for the sound quality that is this clean, I think it's worth the $140 just for this clean, crisp, delicious quality alone. And it has a green button, which is a smart gain, which automatically sets your gain level so you don't have have to wonder about am I going to be clipping and that's a really cool feature especially if you're just getting started but even if you're a professional like I've been doing YouTube for years I've been recording music for years and you can hear my music on Spotify and Apple music by searching for Ben Aqua I highly appreciate all of your support I think this Evo 4 is phenomenal however here's another big con I forgot to talk about the software dilemma with the MacBook Pro M1 the silicon chip when I first plugged this thing in it barely would even read that this thing was even connected. Like it's definitely not a plug and play device when you first start, at least in my experience. So I am running Mac Ventura. I tried downloading the Evo app, which was a free app, kind of the companion app for the Evo 4. And even that like barely loaded, it was buggy as hell. And I couldn't get the firmware to update on the Evo 4. So I was like, oh my God, this thing is freaking doomed. I just wasted $140. But then magically I restarted my computer the next day and I plugged the Evo 4 in and all of a sudden it worked and I have no idea why. So I was able to actually update the firmware firmware to the latest version. And now I can just plug this thing into my computer, set it up easily as an input and an output. It works perfectly with Ableton Live and other software. And yeah, I think the Evo 4 is actually a cute little design. Sounds freaking phenomenal. Build quality definitely leaves a lot to be desired. And that software nightmare, like I don't know if this thing would be a long-term device for me on my MacBook Pro M1 because I did have that software issue when I first loaded it up. And if I'm going to be playing live gigs and stuff with this thing, I don't want this thing to be failing on me in the middle of it gig or something and the build quality crunch like if anyone sits on it or steps on it it's definitely not built like a tank but it's freaking adorable and it's portable and it's minimal and it just looks really beautiful and it makes me want to use it because it's so cute so now let's switch over to the universal audio volt 176 in three two bam and now i'm talking to you through the ua volt 176 this audio interface first of all is built like a freaking tank and it better be because it was two hundred dollars it's built with like all metal and this faux wood or maybe real wood i don't know but it just looks really clean it's really beautiful and it feels extremely durable my goal is to be recording with this and also performing with it live in clubs and stuff like that so i need this thing to be durable as hell a big difference between the volt 176 and the evo 4 is the volt 176 only has one input it has two outputs but again there's only one input so you can plug either an instrument or a microphone into this audio interface they also sell 
sell two input versions and extra output versions and stuff like that. But I just got the one input to output version, the 176, because I think that's all I need for me personally. What do you think about this audio quality? Because I think this also sounds absolutely phenomenal. I think it sounds about the same as the Evo 4 for the most part. Like they're both extremely clean, but the secret sauce to the UA176, secret sauce, I never say that in real life, but I'm gonna say it in this video. The secret sauce is their 76 compressor, which is an emulation, an analog emulation of their really famous 1176 compressor. And it's built right into the Volt 176 and the rest of the 76 line of the UA Volt series. And I love that it's just like one button. Like right now I have the compressor set to vocal and looking down at my waveform, it's getting a very clean signal. And let's see what the noise level sounds like if I shut up for a second. I have noticed using the compressor that there is a little bit of audible hiss. Not a huge deal because I think this sounds really present and just phenomenal, especially with this SM58 and that vocal mode on the 76 compressor. But the compressor to me, while it is amazing, it does create a tiny bit of hiss. It's not a huge deal. You can always take care of that in post. And if I turn the compressor off completely, this is what it sounds like. So you can hear the compressor actually does a lot to bring up the audio level on your microphone or instrument and add some oomph to it, like that analog compression, you know, warmth. I'm gonna re-enable the compressor now. Bam, I mean, you can see this sounds so much different than the normal voice just running through, which also sounds really clean, but running these vocals through that 76 compressor makes a really big difference. Plus, I like that the dials, like the main monitor dial, the gain knob for your input are both on the top of the device. And then there's also a really beautiful headphone jack on this 176 that I could actually use the headphone jack for like really clean, really loud and precise audio monitoring and also Apple Music Lossless. If you watch my channel, you know I love Apple Music Lossless audio. And this 176 is so clean. The headphone jack on this could be another reason just to get this freaking machine. But this Volt 176 sounds amazing. You can hear how clean this sounds. The compressor is a little bit noisy, but the build quality on this machine is fantastic. The knobs feel really solid and I love these meters over here. Just really easy to read, very precise. Precise. And yeah, I love the Volt 176 and I think it's really the build quality and the audio quality in the headphone jack in particular as well that really sell me on the Volt 176 over the Evo 4. The Evo 4 is smaller, it's cuter, it's more minimal, it's easier to use. If you get that software glitch to not glitch the hell out on your computer when you first plug it in. And that reminds me of another thing why I love the Volt 176 over the Evo 4 is I just plugged this thing into my MacBook Pro M1 and it just started to work. I didn't have to download any drivers, any software. I didn't have to register anything. It was plug and play as hell. The Evo 4, not so much. It didn't even work until it magically worked like the next day. And that is concerning for me. But the Evo 4, I actually appreciate the design language of it. I like the kind of minimal exterior and just how easy it is to set up. And once you get the software going to just plug and play, I like that aspect. But the Volt 176 is the one I'm going to be keeping because it has that compressor. There's also a vintage button which gives your vocals and stuff a little extra pizzazz like especially in the high trebles it just feels more solid and the design is beautiful headphone jack is stunning mics sound really good the mic preamp is really clean as well maybe a little bit weirdly cleaner on the evo 4 somehow but if you get either one of these audio interfaces honestly i think you'll be fine especially if you just want really clean audio in and out both of these will deliver that i think it comes down to portability in which i would recommend getting the evo 4 if you're on more of a budget get the evo 4 because it's a lot cheaper but if you want high-end sound with a really good build quality and something that worked right out of the box just plug and play into your mac m1 hands down get the volt 176 if you have any questions for me about either one of these machines leave them in the comments below i hope this was helpful for you if it was smash the like button down below be sure to subscribe as well and if you made it all the way to the end of this video somehow leave a pizza emoji in the comments and that's how i know that you are officially part of the hashtag House of Aqua. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.